Lord, in Jesus' name. He made a promise to us that wherever two or three people gather because of his name, he is right there together with them. And let me tell you, Jesus is here uh, in the, with the whole of his his kingdom is already within us. He lives in us. And for that reason, we are blessed because we are not alone, even as we share uh, the word of the Lord this evening. And allow me uh, to go direct to, to the Bible this evening. And uh, as we welcome uh, if anyone who is listening to us or watching us, this is Deliverance Church, Kiamuni Shekinah Glory Celebration Center. Uh, you're welcome to our service and to all our services. You can follow our page, Shekinah Glory Celebration Center. You can follow us. You will find us online uh, in many platforms. Uh, and I know God is going to bless us. Uh, in the book of Genesis, uh, Genesis, allow me to read uh, some text from the book of Genesis. And today I thought of uh, picking a character uh, from scriptures. And I picked one character in the name of Joseph. And from his life, uh, we are going to learn a few pearls that made his life as a man of God and as a young person a great success. The story of Jacob, J Joseph is a story of great success. And there is a lot, I believe, he had been taught by the Spirit of God. And if you can look at his life today, uh, we can be able to learn a lot that can lead us to live in that kind of success. The book of Genesis chapter 37 uh, from first na number one is an introduction of, of the family of Jacob. And Jacob dwelt in the land in which his father has been a stranger and a sojourner in the land of Canaan. And the history of the descendants of Jacob and his line, his Jacob line, Joseph when he was 17 years old, he was shepherding the flock with his brothers. The land was with the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah and his father's wives. And Joseph brought to his father a badly pot on them. Now Jacob, or Israel, loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a long tunic with sleeves. But his brothers saw that their father loved Joseph more than all his brothers, they hated him and he could not say peace to him. Now Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brothers and they hated him the more. And he said to them, listen now, here I pray you this dream that I have dreamt. And from verse number seven, going downwards there, Joseph was able to tell the brothers his dream and he dreamt it again and he was able again to tell the brothers his dream. And the story continues like that. And the heart trade in his brother's heart continued until a time they were able to, to sell Joseph to a fallen land as a slave. And then we can jump to Genesis 41. Genesis chapter 41, uh, from verse number 41. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. And the fellow took of his signet ling and his hand, from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand and he clothed him in a vestment of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. He made him to ride on the second chariot which he had. And officials cried before him, bowed the knee, and he set him over all the land of Egypt. And the fellow said unto Joseph, and follow, and without you shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. So, uh, we, you can lead on your own time uh, the rest of the story of how Joseph was able to save uh, the world from a famine that was very severe. Uh, but what I want us to pick is uh, the life of this young man who we can all lay on with because he's a godly man who is able to get from where we have read uh, in Genesis uh, 37 to where he has come to Genesis 41. And it's a story of pain, it's a story of challenges, but it ends up with a lot of success. And I was looking at him as somebody we can emulate and try to discover what had the Lord taught him and what made him become what he was able to become. 
And I want to pick up a f just a few points that I will see in the, lives of, in the life of Joseph. And I believe uh, that this is what the Spirit of God would like us to learn from his life. And the point number one is that Joseph, in the midst of all the challenges he was facing at home, his identity was correct. His identity was correct. Joseph was very sure of who he was or of who he is in God. That became a great strength in a time of his trials, in a time when he was rejected, in a time when he was going through a lot of pain, his strength was driven from the point that this boy, he knew his true self in God. He was able to identify himself with God. And the Bible is calling us, and the word of God, and God is calling us to identify ourselves with God more than we would identify ourselves with what is happening around us. In the midst of all that opposition, in the midst of all that hatred, this boy was able to identify himself with the strong God, the God of Israel, and because his identity was correct in God, he knew who he is in God. It doesn't matter the definition, the brothers would like to define him, he knew who he was in God. And for that reason, he was able to live a life that was so, was so good in the midst of great trials. You know, when you have a true identity, you live a life of truth. You live a life of truth. And Jesus is the truth. When your identity is correct, when your identity is okay, then you are able to live a life of truth. A life of truth is a life that has no fear, a life that is full of love. You, we can see all these things in the life of Joseph. That he was a man who was able to love people who are not kind of uh, very fledly to him because he had a true identity as God kind. So he was able to live his true nature. I remember the other time we were, we were given an opportunity and we were, we were, we were teaching on ourselves living in our true nature. When our identity is right, it doesn't matter what goes around us, but we find this boy, he was living a life of truth. He was able to love. He was able to forgive. He was able to care. All those things, he was able to have them naturally in his life because he knew who he was in God. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody say amen? Something else that we get from true identity is that when your identity is true, it, it does not only release a life of truth, but true identity will release onto you the God kind of thinking, the correct thinking. So because we find this man again, or this boy, by the time he was starting facing these trials, he was a boy, maybe 17 years of age. But his thinking was so different from his brother's thinking. There's, there's a thinking that he was taught by, by being in God, by being in that God-given identity. And you know, our thinking can affect our life. Our thinking can affect our life in a very, very big way. So this boy, because of his true identity, that identity was able to release the correct thinking about God, about self, and about his purpose. Don't forget that. This boy... There's a thinking he had about God, about himself, and about his purpose. And for that reason, he was able to go through a very tough situation in the midst of a great opposition. And he was able to win and overcome. Unlike, people, unlike other people who had a challenge in their identity, they had a wrong thinking about God, about themselves, and about their purpose. But this boy was able to have that great thinking that he is, he is not an accident in life. He has, he has a purpose in life, even if he was facing a lot of trials. And you know, definitely God says in the book of Proverbs 23, verse number 7, that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he, as a man. So this boy, he was who he is because of his thinking about himself, about his God, and about his mission. And now, as we continue, I'd like you to think about your thinking. What you think, even what you think about yourself, what you think about your God, and about your mission. And um, 
the, then, and I, I would also think that is why people like Joshua, when they were beginning their ministry, especially to define the land and to face the giants, yeah, and I know you know the scripture, uh, a very common scripture, uh, Joshua 1, verse number 8, God wanted Joshua to have a specific thinking pattern. And that's why God told Joshua, this, this book, you should meditate on it. Joshua 1, 8, you should meditate on it. Because God knew there is a thinking that Joshua can think and never inherit the land, even if he is born again. Even if he is a man of God, there's a thinking he can embrace which can lead him to failing in his life, in his relationship with God, and in his purpose. Are we together, church? Are we together? And we know there are some guys who are following, who are part of the Joshua camp, and they were not able to receive, to, to live to their purposes because their thinking was not right. Because as Joshua was meditating upon the word of God, Maybe they were meditating about the giants. You know the story in the, uh, in the Bible where quite a number of people in the days of Joshua, they were not able to get to the promised land except Joshua and Caleb who not only believed God, but their thinking was, was, was different. They thought success. They thought God was with them. They thought God cannot send them to the giants to be killed by giants. That's what they were thinking. That was their meditation. That's why God was very careful because God knew if this man's thinking is not correct, he may not be able to reach to that land. And um, definitely, even in Psalms 1, we have, a, we have a text whereby God is telling us about our thinking. And again, he tells this, the, 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 he, he gives a testimony of this man who prospers in whatever he does. And God says this, the reason is he meditates on the word of God day and night. It's, it doesn't mean that he is always thinking scriptures. But he has allowed the word of God or God to influence his thinking. And because of that, this man prospers in whatever he does. He is an influencer. There is a person he has allowed to take over his thinking in the midst of trials and temptations and hard situation, he has allowed God to influence and to direct his thinking. Are we together? In the book of Philippians 2, verse number 5, I'm just reminding us that thinking is very important. It can cause you succeed or fail in your mission. The Bible tells us through Paul that let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Again, the thinking part of it. Again, the mind part of it. That there's a way you can think and miss the Christ kind of results. So he said, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. What was the thinking pattern of Christ? What was he thinking about when he is being tried, when he's being tempted? What was he thinking when he is facing opposition? What was he thinking? How was his thinking structured? And then Paul tells us we need to go to that mind of Christ and structure ourselves as Christ. And again, we know Jesus was, was, was able to think right because he allowed God. Even he told God, only your will will be done in my life. That was his thinking. He believed a lot in what God has called him to fulfill and he was able to succeed. You know, Paul again in the book of Philippians uh, chapter 4, verse number 8, he tells us that whatever things that are pure, he's telling us about our thinking, whatever things that are lovely, whatever things that are worthy, whatever things that are of good report, let that be our thinking. Let that be our thinking. So Paul is kind of taking our minds out of negative thinking to thinking in line with the word of God. And if we think that way, we are able to get the kind of results. Again, Paul, in the book of 2 Corinthians, just allow me to give you a lot of scriptures. We are in Bible study, don't forget. In the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 4 and 5, and Paul talks about our warfare. And he says, um, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the bring down of strongholds, casting down arguments. By the way, arguments are, are, are brought by thinking. And every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God, bringing every thought captive and into the obedience of Christ. Again, Paul, he is talking about the battle that we fight. He is telling us if we don't win this battle here, in the battle of our minds, we have not fully fought 
the, 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 the spiritual battle. Because we have to bring our thinking captive to obey Christ. And that's what we find in the life of this, of this man, Joseph, and many, many others. Many others. There's a pattern. There's a way they, they allowed God to take over their thinking. Even when they were surrounded by enemies, surrounded by hatred, surrounded by challenges, in rejection, there is a thinking they had. People like David, there's a way they knew God is forever together with me. God will never allow his Holy One to see corruption. God, you know, there's a way they thought. And you know, I, I, I know somebody said that uh, uh, you, everything is crafted by your thoughts. You know, uh, that, that you receive information from whatever source that you receive. And that information determines your thinking. And your thinking determines your habits. You know, your, your what? Your, your, your actions. Your action determines your habit, your habit, your character, and then your destiny. So these people, they, influence, they allowed God to be their source of words that will craft their thinking and definitely lead them to a great destiny. So we find Joseph is a man who was able to have the right identity which helped them to live a life of truth and also to embrace the right thinking. Are we together? Are we together in Jesus' name? The second thing we find in the life of Joseph, allow me to just take you through his life for a while, that this boy, because of all that we have said, number two, that also led him to a life of forgiving. This is why this guy is very successful. It led him to live a natural life. It's not something that he picks in the morning and throws away in the evening. Because of the light kind of thinking, the light kind of, he eats the word of God that leads him to live a life of forgiveness. He is able to forgive uh, his brothers and all those other people, not only his brothers, Potiphar's wives, and all those other people who are able to, to attack him when he, he was in need. In his time of need, people, instead of helping him, they came to attack him, and he was able uh, to, to forgive them. So that's another part of the life of Joseph. You know, number three, Joseph, Joseph was a man with a vision. He was a man with a vision. From when he was very young, from that young age of number 17, in terms of age, he was able to connect with God to a point of receiving a vision about his life. The, the roadmap of his life was so clear to him. How did he get that? He got that from God because of that personal relationship, that identity part of it, that right thinking part of it, but we need to note, he was a man with a vision. People with a vision cannot be easily destroyed, cannot be easily hindered or stopped, because a vision becomes a strength. Proverbs 29, 18, it is says that, where there is no vision, people will perish. When there is no vision. So if this boy did not have a vision, he would have perished. But now, because he had a vision, because he has a vision, that vision was able to guide him and to read him. He was able to go through. I believe even the reason why David is talking about he is able to go through the valley of the shadow of death is because he can see beyond the valley. He has a vision. He knows this valley is not my end. It's not my destiny. I have a vision. So when the valley comes in, that vision, that thing that he is seeing ahead is able to motivate him and to strengthen him to go through the valley of the shadow of death. Proverbs 29, 18, I've told you about that. When you don't have a vision, you'll be crushed. You'll be destroyed. But Joseph, he is able to move on from trial to trial to another trial because of what he saw. Even uh, there was also this man in the book of Acts 26, Paul, and he tells King Agrippa that, King Agrippa, there's something that you need to know about myself. The vision that I received many years ago, I have never been ignorant of it. That vision has become the source of my strength, has become the source of my passion, has become the source of my, has been my motivator in life. Because if there is no vision, you will you'll perish quickly. You can be attacked and come down easily. But people of a vision, they are able to move on and move on and move on and move on. So Joseph was a man who saw this vision. 
even, even when he was facing difficulties. And Habakkuk tells us that, uh, that if you receive, you're able to receive a vision, you are so blessed. And he tells us in Habakkuk chapter 2, the Lord answered me and said, write your vision and engrave it plainly upon tablets that everyone who passes may be able to read it. And, and the, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. And it hastens to the end. It will not deceive or disappoint. Though it tally, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not be heeded on its appointed day. So Joseph was able to understand the vision that I saw. God has already declared that it is for an appointed time. So this time, I'm not seeing it because this is not its appointed time. Now I'm in Potiphar's house. I cannot see myself as a governor because this is not the appointed time. But he was being motivated by that vision that in its appointed time, that vision will come to pass. And for that reason, he can go through fire and come out strong because he can see his future and his purpose through the eyes of his vision. Number four. Number four about Joseph. About, I don't want to lose you. I will keep on reminding you. I will keep on reminding what we are saying. I don't worry about the rain. As long as you can hear me, I just need one person to get the message and will be good to go in Jesus' name. And God will always allow that one person that he wants to have the message to get it. His identity was correct. Don't forget that one. Then number two, I said that he had a forgiving heart. Number three, he was a man of vision. Number four, equally important, this Joseph, he learned how to support every leader that he came under. Every leader. He supported his leaders uh, wholeheartedly. He, he was able to support. That was something he was taught by God. Because God knew this guy has a destiny. This guy has a vision. And God equipped him. He gave them some pillars in life. And in particular some nuggets. Or some pals, you know, today we thought of calling them pals. Yeah, Joseph's success pals. That was the title of our message. Yeah? That he had these pals that he so embraced because God gave them to him because God knew that this is what will take him to the next level. And we find Joseph with this pal number four that he is able to support his leaders. Every leader he came under, he was able to support them in their visions. He has a vision, don't forget. And he will never forget his vision. But even if he has his vision alive, he knows my vision is for an appointed time. But as I wait for the appointed time of my vision, I am now under my father's vision. That is what he was at home. He was under his father's vision. And Joseph was able to support in unity, in obedience, and in hard work. That is how you support another's vision. In unity, in obedience and in hard work. Never forget that. That's how you support another's vision. In unity against that, that again. In obedience and in hard work. Not just being there. Not just appealing and disappearing. It's about in unity. And the unity that we are talking about. The unity that unites with another's vision. Is the Psalms 133 unity. That is the unity. If it is not that one. You are not supporting it. Are we together church? Yeah, in unity and in obedience and in hard work. And we see this one in Joseph's life at home. He is so united with his biological father, so united with him, and he supports him with the whole of his heart. Then again, we find him again working for Potiphar. And again, in that house, in a foreign country, in a foreign land where they are not embraced as people, they are embraced as, as slaves, as low class People were not supposed to, you, you, even if they die, nobody cares. That is where he is now. And he is one of those people, even if you die, nobody cares. You are the lowest of the class. You are a slave. Even in that environment, he was able to give obedience, unity, and hard work to Potiphar's vision. What a great pal. What a great thing that he embraced that made him great in Jesus' mighty name. He supported Potiphar. He's, he goes to jail and he supports the jailer 
again, you know the story, uh, we may not really need to go through that story, but you know, he, he was able to support every vision that he came under. He was able to support Pharaoh in his vision, especially where we read in Genesis 41, and it is in line with supporting another that his was, was manifested, that God caused his. His vision was revealed in another man's vision. Are we together? Hope you are getting me because this is very important as you get it today in the name of Jesus Christ. So not only he was able to support others' vision, number five, we are going to up to number six, don't worry. He was able to release his gifts and skills in every environment that he found himself. He was able and willing to release his gifts and his skills in any kind of environment where he found himself. Because he knew I'm a man of destiny. Wherever I find myself, my Lord is leading me there. In the desert, in the valley, wherever I am, where I find myself, that is God who has led me there. And there is no place where Joseph hid his gift, his skill. He didn't. It doesn't matter the environment. Hush or Frederick. You know, he was there. And whenever Joseph showed up, he came in full of himself. Full of his, he came and he gave you his gifts, his skills, everything in any kind of environment. He was not like, you know, the, Jesus wants us in Matthew 25 of these people who hide their gifts based on their environment. We, and Jesus talks of this man, mwenye um, alikuwa na taranta moja, na kaweza kuona, kuona the environment according to his judgment, uh, the master was a little bit harsh. I thought you were a bad master. I thought you're a bad master and you leap where you don't sow. And for that reason, I don't give you a kind my gift. So I hid my gift. And you know who suffered at the end of the day. But Joseph, that is not his direction. Joseph at home. Na kuambia Joseph atakupatia kipawachake. Nyumbani. Bila kuogopa. He has the gift of service. You find him serving his brothers who he knows and it is recorded they hated him. Every day he knew that my brothers don't like me at all. They hate me. But even if that was the situation, he cannot hide his gift from them. Let me tell you, these are the people who will always succeed. Joseph again, in Potiphar's house, how could say, Mimi ukuni mtumwa, you know, I cannot serve them. He served them in jail. He, in jail, actually, he, he is also, he had an opportunity to exercise his spiritual gifts in jail. He is there, uh, hajafanya crime yote. Instead of being angry, imagine faith. Ana, anatumia kipawa yake. Spiritual. He is interpreting dreams for people. He is in jail. He is not in his church. He is not in his vision. He is not in his destiny. He is in jail. He is suffering. But even in suffering, let me tell you, Joseph will not cover his gift. Can you declare I'm not covering my gift at all? I cannot cover. I cannot hide my gift. It doesn't matter the environment. Even if I would call them my enemies, I will still help them with my gifting. And he was able to help Egyptians. Egyptians don't appear friendly. By the way, Joseph had a record of friendliness with Egyptians. Like in Unaona, all these guys is, is suffering. Ndiyo wanamutesa, wanamuumiza. Lakini anaweza toa vipawa vyake. Akona time ya kuombea the batra. Akona time ya kuombea the baker. Akona time ya quintuplet. His, their dreams because Joseph has this character. If Joseph anajua kucheza keyboard, hakuna mahali ataicheza. As long as amejipata pale, eh? Ata kuje tu hapa tu aone, amesha kibia uko. Any, and, and he is able to give himself. But what do we find? What do we find in our in our today's character is whereby people who are gifted, they are just sitting somewhere. They know the gift is needed, but then they have all these reasons like the guy with one talent, of why they are not supposed to present their giftings. And they miss a lot. By the way, it is because of him interpreting dreams in prison, that is why he became the governor. 
That is why. No other reason. That is what made him. What if he was this kind of people? Tiwa na niangaliaga vibaya, sita jionyesha uko. Hawata jua mimi ni muhubiri. Hawata jua mimi ni muombezi. Hawata jua mimi ni nabi. Hawata jua mimi ni evangelist. You know, what, what, what great undoing that we do to ourselves when we hide our gifts. Because our gifts are supposed for, to be for service. Where? Everywhere. Everywhere you go. Ukijipata Nairobi, na ukona kipawa, that is a place, you know. That's where God has placed you at that particular moment in time. Introduce yourself with your giftings. Amen? Are we together? You know, people like uh, Daniel, that's why they were able to, because of that kind of character like that of Joseph, waliweza kutoa vipawa vyao in Babylon. In Babylon, mfalume ameota. Na mfalume, and either I how dream, I'm an attack to test our two cause of dream. Alafa Kasema Kwamba, Mwenyata Kuja Kwangu, and Yambia Kile Niliota, Nanyambia the interpretation thereof, Huyondie, Nitakua, Nitam to Nataka Nipata interpretation. And Daniel, Hayuko Nyumbani, Ye Ako captivity. He is a captive, he is a prisoner. And I told you the other time, not only the prisoner, he has been made a eunuch, if you know what that means. That is, that is what has happened to his life. But even in that condition of having been made a eunuch and a captive, he goes to the king and he prays to God and he gets the interpretation of the dream and he was able not to hide his gift. Can you declare, I will never hide my gift? Declare, I will never hide my gift. You know, this, that, 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 that's, that's so bad for you. If you are able to hide your gift, and we have so many people who can tell you, you know, in the past I used to do this. Why don't you do it now? Samaniriona, niriona. Io, you are actually the the reason why people like Daniel were exalted is because they did not hide their gifts. The reason why Joseph was lifted is because in the in the palace, kunamutua wakati the king had a dream. Somebody said there was this young man in prison who had a gift. Doesn't the Bible says that your gift will take you before kings? How? When you put it in practice. A gift hidden will never see any king anywhere. A gift that is asleep will never see any king anywhere. It is a gift that has been taken out for practice. A gift that to make you I am gifted in this. And, and by the way, this is what you do to a gift. Huh? When you discover you have a gift, it is your responsibility to polish your gift. It is, your, it is not God's responsibility. Then you create, you look for a platform. You, 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 you practice a gift by looking for platforms where that gift is needed. Ukisikia kwamba, you know, if you may be gifted, like you can pray for something, if that is a gift, you feel that I'm blessed in that area of praying for people, you, you, you look for those players. You look for those areas. You come to church and you ask the pastor, is there anything I can pray for? Now your gift is not hidden. And that gift will take you before kings. But, but there's no gift that is hidden. And sometimes you wonder why gift is there to has to break it to kings. Ilihali Bibili nasema kwamba ati mwenye amepata gift, amepata a precious thing. That's what the Bible says. Whoever, whoever mwenye kona gift, amepata a precious thing. Na itakuwa ikitan life yake. Itakuwa ikimtan. Life yake itakuwa ikipelekwa na yo gift. But this gift, you have to platform it. You have to lift it somewhere. You have to go to that university and into introduction, you look for ways to look for that CU leader. Now, Mwambie, by the way, ile church mimi nimetoka, nilikuwa kwa praise team. That is how your gift will make a room for you when it is put in, in some platform. And whenever you put a gift in a platform, then that gift definitely you discover it will create a way for you, even you're able to influence in some place. That's what happened in, with Joseph, David, Paul, everybody. Hakuna lipewa gift alafa kai feature. Ata Paul alipo discover kuna gift. Ata, ata anatuambia kwamba alipo, alipo kutana na Jesus on the road to Damascus. Alip, anakagundua mepatio icho kipawa. Ata chakufanyika uh, the, the, the apostro. Akasema hata hakuenda kukonsult mutu. Hata akurudi Jerusalem kwa kina Peter. Ye alienda kwenye munga memuambia ende. Na unona yu kipawa yake, iliweza kumleta 
mahali ambapo iliweza kubadilisha watu wengi na ikampatia platform are we together church so and i'm talking this you know i can take a little bit of time here because i know we are all gifted you all are gifted but please if if there's no way you're using your gift and you are like gifted then something is not right and that way it is hindering your door what if joseph would be angry in prison aseme mimi jela mimi hakuna mtu nitasaidia eh asikie watu wako na dreams mmoja ameota sijui akibeba mkate alafu ndege wa angani wanakula hiyo mkate sema i don't care don't care watajua watajua fanya tabu sita wa interpret ya sitafanya hivyo leo sitaibisha eh? leo si, you know that's what is common eh what if he said he did not know that that gift that interpretation of a small dream to a small man prisoner because prisoner would be kind of a small man just interpreting the the dream of a fellow prisoner would be the key to his vision and to his success amen we need to repent why we don't give off gifts eh tunaingia kwa mikutano unajificha na huko nyuma have not done that is humility humility ni ile ya jesus anaingia kwa mkutano na anaenda huko mbele kusoma bible anasema mimi e mimi ndiye mliambiwa that is now humility now amen hiding your gift is fear is not humility that's fear and fear is not of god fear is not of god david akiwa kule malishoni akiwa huko jangwani he didn't hide his gift and his gift was known by people beyond him when people you were looking for a for a person to sing to the king everyone knew the best person who can do that is david because when david discovered kwamba ako na gift ya kutunga nyimbo na kucheza kinumbi hata kama hakuwa na cheo ya aina yoyote hata kama alikuwa na rejection ya life yeye alihakikisha museme musiseme ni mtajua niko na kipawa na ni katika hiyo ango ya kipawa chake kujulikana na wengine ambao pengine hawako so fledly wakati kulitangazwa huko kutoka kwa kasri ya mfalme kwamba kunahitajika the bible says when the, there was that kind of a time when uh, when a evil spirit came upon Saul eh? when the, 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 the evil spirit that came upon Saul you know i was remembering something else in that scripture but that's another day of bible study because your bible says that uh, that an evil spirit from god that's why i told you the other time you don't just read the english bible because if you read the english bible you will lie to yourself that there is an evil spirit in god you will lie to yourself just because of reading the english bible the bible is not written in english there's no evil spirit in god you know i think you know that by now eh? but you know sometimes we tell you people would tell you at you know, can you imagine an evil spirit in god can you just imagine that that uh, at you know, at the, at when david was anointed the spirit of god came upon him and from god an evil spirit came upon Saul from God an evil spirit but that's why you need to 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 be uh, to be good in your bible study to understand the languages and all that and the context and many many other things you may discover quite a lot that you thought God did and then you discover it wasn't God who was there it was another spirit that came in but but because of that then it was announced that there's somebody who can come and just sing a song and all play the harp na kiplay hiyo harp the evil spirit that was upon Saul would depart from him then everybody there they said who else but David the son of Jesse hiyo gift ikamtoa kwa kichaka and I, i remember i don't know why we were talking to the youth the other time atukasema kama kuna kitu itakutoa kwa kichaka ni your gift gift ikamtoa kwa kichaka na kichaka inaweza kuwa kichaka ya aina yoyote yeye yeah, alikuwa kwa kichaka ya rejection. Yeye yeah, alikuwa kwa kichaka ya, ya mambo tu mengi. Lakini gift yake ikamchomoa huko na ikampeleka kwa kwa mfalme kwa sababu yeye hakuficha kipawa chake. Alipoenda pale vitani wakati walikuwa wanapigana na na Goriath, David alijua pia ako na kipawa chingine cha kuweza he's very good with the, with the, with the, with the word we call that thing, with the sling. He's very good with the sling. He knew that. And he had the sling. Hako ameacha home. Eh? He was walking everywhere he goes carrying his potential, his his gifting, his skill, and it wasn't hidden. And he was wearing 
to, to use it to fight Goriath. Alifika pale, new environment, new people, strange people to him. The greetings that he got were not that friendly. You know, you take yourself there. That should be the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 6. Is this here? Yeah. 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 16. With the story of Goliath and David, look for it. You find David is in a strange environment, in a harsh environment. But in that harsh environment, he knew, he took it as a place to use his gift. Banas, if you were. When you go to that college, you don't hide yourself. You come out. I'm a mini keyboardist. David Alianza Kuliza, who, who, what will be given to the person who is going to kill this guy? But David knew, I may not have a sword, I may not have all those things. I have a gift. I can throw the sling. I won't hide it. It may be appearing to be a small thing in this battle, but I won't hide it. It is small. I won't hide it. It may be not very awesome in comparison to what Saul is carrying. Saul Buana, on a machine gun. Yamana sema na kuja na mawe. Haku ficha yo mawe yake. And how many times do we hide our small gifts in the presence of big gifts, thinking that our gifts are not needed. And then we, 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 we kind of miss the victory. And David was there. What am I saying? I was saying that he released his gifts and skills in every environment he found himself. True Christianity is like that of, even like that of people like Philip. The Bible says in the book of Acts, when there was persecution in, in Jerusalem, Philip had a gift of an evangelist. He is on the run. He is on the run. He is not, he is not on a mission. He is on the run. Those are two different things. Ye anatoroka, anatoroka vita. Anatafutua kuwawa, lakina kuambia, akiwa kwa hiyo barabara ya kutoroka. Akienda Samaria, na kuambia uko Samaria, wana enjoy. He was releasing joy in Samaria. Who? A, a somebody on the run. Somebody who is wanted for dead. But how is the feature keep our chake? To say, I will not hide my gift. Because maybe, what if he did? What if David did? What if Joseph hid his gift? What if they did? We could not have their stories as good stories. There's no way Joseph could have helped his brother. The key to everything was that gift. That's why he, was, he became great and he was able to have all this property and he was able to help his brothers. The same case with David. Amen. So Joseph in prison, definitely Daniel in Babylon, those are people. And, and number six, and finally, Joseph was a man of great wisdom. He was also a man of great wisdom. These people, they also went to God. The Bible says in the book of James, whoever doesn't have wisdom, come for it. Go to God for it. So when you hear people had wisdom, they went to God for it. So you need to be a In that wisdom, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So when you have the godly kind of wisdom, you will carry with yourself the fear of the Lord. And you find because of that wisdom that he had, na kuambia majaribu hakuwanaona kama ni kitu especially in Potiphar's house this guy akakutwa na na huyo mke wa Potiphar but this boy has a lot of spiritual wisdom anajua if i go this direction it is against my god number 1 number 2 i kill my dream i kill my vision wisdom asema nikipita hii barabara wisdom inaniambia ninanyonga hiyo dream Niriota ni kiwa 17 years. Maybe sayi ni 27 years. Eh? Pengine ni kumiaka kama whatever, whatever years. Eh? But then, akajua, your dream, bado is a life in God. That's wisdom now. My dream is for an appointed time. But now, this temptation that has come my way, if I allow it, if I allow it in my life, and be unfaithful to my God, I miss the fear of God, which is given by wisdom. I just want to, to prove the fact that this boy was a boy of wisdom. He had a lot of wisdom. And wisdom really helped him to overcome different kind of challenges. And we also need to go to God and ask him to give us his wisdom. The Bible says, whoever is lacking wisdom, akuje tu kwa mungu. Ambie mungu, mungu nipe hekma. Vila tunenda kwa mungu, tunaomba uponyaji. Tunaomba jia ifunguke. Tunaomba mambo yale ambayo ya, 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 natu, ya natushinda na natusaidia. Pia akona muito kwa kila moja wetu kwamba twende kwake tuombe hekma 
na watu kuna watu kabisa kwa Biblia kama Sulaimani alipokuwa katika ile hali ya kufanyika mfalme wa Israeli na akashindwa hii jambo ataifanya namna gani wajibu ni mkubwa kazi ni yani watu ni wale wale he was there he was a young guy in the days of his father and he also had history he knew he being in being in, in the loyal family he knew the history of the kingdom and the history of the tribe alikuwa naona how vile hiyo kazi sio rahisi he knew about moses he knew about abraham those were their fathers alikuta mungu akiitwa god of abraham isaac and jacob so he knew the history and he knew how leadership was hard to some of those leaders some of those patriarchs that were before him and even his father david he saw his father he he knew the stories of his father and the battles that he was fighting and he was not willing to go that direction and this boy knew the only thing that can help me not fight like my father is wisdom and the bible says when he goes to the he went to the high places in gibeon and god comes in the night and ambia to god please god give me wisdom he was desperate for wisdom paka kauliza mungu how can i lead this great nation and with all these people unless you give me your wisdom and we know that there are quite a number of uh, of records in the life of king solomon on how he was able to have a lot of wisdom even to see christ you know he knew everything he knew even about jesus he knew a lot he knew a lot he knew a lot you know this boy was so blessed spiritually what was spiritually even even in uh, in matters that came before him like that story of the two ladies and the and the two kids one dead one alive and he was able to to give the correct judgment because he was a man of wisdom so these people like joseph you know joseph again was met by that situation whereby there are seven years of famine seven years of plenty and that is where now wisdom was needed and falao didn't have an idea falao hakuwa na idea anajua kuna famine lakini hakuwa na idea lakini kijana huyo ametoka jela lakini Mungu amembariki na hekma akaweza kumuelekeza vile ambavyo anaweza leta suluhisho kwa hiyo jaa ilikuwa katika miaka saba na wakatumia formula ya Joseph na akaweza hekima yake ikaweza kuleta matokeo mazuri katika nchi yake and uh, the bible tells again now when the brothers came the dream that he had when he was very young was fulfilled in their presence he, they saw Joseph in his dream they saw the blessing upon the life of Joseph and for that reason Joseph was able to move all his family from Canaan to Egypt and he gave them the best of the land in Goshen and he took his father introduced his father to Pharaoh you know you know the story the story has a very wonderful ending because this man was able to live a life as we have tried to explain it today allow me to remind you from number 1 amen allow me to remind you from number 1 we were talking about joseph a man who has gone through it all but he was able to come out successful and we said because he had some there's a lot we can learn beyond what we have said but number 1 his identity was correct that is a strength he knew himself in god he knew himself in christ in today's language he knew that i am a son of god as, as because i accepted jesus he has made me a son of god i have an inheritance in god god is my abba father you know god is together with me that was settled in him he had no doubt about that he was not double minded about who he was and that not whatever was happening to him did not touch air and kokombia when your identity is correct you live a life of truth you live a life of truth you live a life of christ a life of love a life of care a life of forgiveness when your identity is true uh, you are able to have the correct thinking because thinking is key to your life you know and we have quite a lot of scriptures we have gone through today in line with thinking and we say this guy was able to forgive his heart was full of love even for those people like Potiphar's wife and the brothers uh, who were very harsh to him he was able to to release them and to forgive them the very day they messed with his life because that was his nature uh, he was a man with a vision because of that closeness to god he was able and and by the way joseph was very close to his father jacob and uh, that closeness joseph he, the father used to teach him quite a lot even writing like a lot of things but now i know he was also teaching him how to be close to God because Jacob was also very close to God and it is that closeness with God that he was able to see the vision 
of his life. And that vision gave him a lot of strength. So when we get close to God, please make sure that he tells you and he gives you a vision of your life. He was able to support the leaders and the, and the leaders that were before him. Every leader where God placed him, he was able to support him the leaders wholeheartedly in their vision and this was expressed in his obedience, in his unity and in his hard work. You are not supporting me unless until you, you, you show obedience, you show unity and you show hard work. That is how you support. That's how you support. And then, let me say, he was able to release his gift and skill even in very harsh environments. However, he found himself even in prison. He did not hide his spiritual gifts. He did not hide his natural skills. He did not hide any of that. He was always coming out the full of himself in whatever situation and was able to release gifts and helping others. Number six, we have said this guy was a man of great wisdom. He was a man of great wisdom and that's what we need to go to God and ask of him to give that wisdom to us so that we can be able to be directed well by his wisdom in times of trials, in times of situations and we're able to come out victoriously in Jesus' name. Can we stand on our feet? Can we just stand on our feet? And I know you, you, can, you can just take yourself before the Lord and do a response to God. Do a, because we all want to end like Joseph. That, that's our desire. And that's the reason why God would have picked that kind of a story for us today. And so that we can learn a little bit of what Joseph went through and how he was able to overcome. You can just take yourself before the Lord. Now, one be a two, God, please help me. Help me to have that correct identity. Help me to identify myself, not with my environment, but with what you have done for me in Christ. Help me to identify myself as a son of God. And uh, in the midst of whatever I may be going through, Father, I am a son of God. I am a son of God. You never forsake your sons. You never forget your sons. My Father, I identify myself in this situation, in this generation. I identify myself as a son of God. I identify myself as a person who will walk in the truth, who will walk in the truth. I will put the belt of truth. That is how I will walk in the truth, in the truth. Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And that identity of truth, my Father, I allow it to influence my thinking. I allow your word to give direction to my thinking. Every thought that is not of God, I take it captive to the obedience of Christ. Let this mind be in me, Jesus, that was in you. Spirit of God, give me the mind of Christ. Give me the mind of Christ. That mind of Christ, my Father. That mind that you gave to Christ. That mind that you gave to all these patriarchs in the Bible and the healers of faith. That mind that was able to take through them through hard situations and come out victorious in the mighty name of Jesus. That mind, my Father. My Father, that heart of forgiveness, Lord. Give me that heart of forgiveness. And if there's somebody you have not forgiven, we can still repeat that again and tell you, please do forgive them in Jesus name because if we don't forgive we are, we are missing quite a lot in this kingdom in Jesus name we, we, we release ourselves to God God we need to be people of vision pray that God that your vision may be clear that your vision even if it appears to be buried Habakkuk is telling us that vision is still alive in God don't bury it don't bury it by lack of wisdom don't bury it by refusing to use your gift that vision is alive in God and maybe your gift is the key to your vision so please also pray that God help me not to hide my vision not to hide my gift not to hide my gift father you have gifted me so much you have given me so many gifts father I will release my gift to service wherever you send me at home in, wherever you send me, in Nakuru, wherever you send me, in our church especially, my Father, I release my gift. This gift that you have given me, my Father, I release my gift. I release my gift. I will not be rid from my gift. I will not say my gift is one in comparison to the one who has five. Even if my gift is one, I will release my gift to ministry. I will release my gift to the young. I will release my gift to the old. I will release my gift like David. I will offer my gift even in the largest of all the battles. I will present my gift in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, let's pray that God may help us not to hide ourselves, that he may give us the strength and the courage to come out.
in the name of Jesus. The way Jesus was coming out in meetings. He was coming out and was coming to the front. Not in pride, but in the, in the, in the, in the angle of him wanting to bless people with the gift that God has given to him. And he was able to come out in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we release our gifts, we release our skills. And my Father, we pray for wisdom. We pray for wisdom tonight. We pray for wisdom, Jesus. Give us the wisdom of life. Give us the wisdom in the spirit. Give us that gift of wisdom. That gift that you said through Paul, that there's a gift of wisdom. Give us that gift, my father. That gift that you released to Solomon and he was able to live a life unlike his father, unlike his predecessors. He was able to live a different life. He was able even to build your temple. He was able to do quite a lot for the kingdom of God. He was able to receive the peace of God in the name of Jesus. My father, release your wisdom unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless our lives, Jesus. Bless our lives, Jesus. Bless our life. Direct us by your spirit. Where we are going wrong, spirit of God, you are our guide. You are our counselor. You are our teacher. Teach us, teacher. We humble for your teaching. We come down to be taught by you, Lord. We agree with your direction. Father, give us your direction. We don't want to miss our destinies. We don't want to miss our goals. We don't want to miss the victory that you have given us in Christ. Give us a direction. Connect us, my Father, to the wisdom that you want us to receive in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Spirit of God. We thank you for bringing us the word in season. Your word has a purpose in my life even today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yes, you can still talk to him. No man be like Joseph, I'm in prison. But my father, I will stand strong. Like Joseph, I'm in jail, but I'm standing strong. I'm standing strong. I appear to be in slavery, but I'm standing strong. I'm standing strong, my father, in every area of my life. I refuse to complain. I agree to work. I agree to do what you have called me to do. Yes, I will be focused on the future. I know my vision is for an appointed time. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Strengthen me every day. Help me every day. By your spirit, help me every day. By your spirit, help me every day. My father, I know it is not by power, it's not by might. All this Joseph was able to do because he was a man of your spirit. By your spirit, Lord. By your spirit, Lord, I will make it. By your spirit, Lord, I will raise my gift. By your spirit, Lord, I will hear the voice of God. By your spirit, God. By your spirit, God, I will serve. I will serve in the vision that you put me under. I will serve in Deliverance Church Kiamuni. By your spirit, Lord, I will do it. By your spirit, Lord. By your spirit, Lord, I will stand. I will stand for you, Jesus. By your spirit, Father. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you glory. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you, Father. 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 We thank you. Can you just take a minute and thank God because of the appointed time for your vision? You just thank God. And you tell the Lord, thank you, Father, because I know my vision will come to pass. My vision will not go to the grave. My purpose will not be buried. I will see my vision. I will see the accomplishment of my vision. This big vision that you give me when I was 17, that one day I'll be the ruler of all the tribes of Jacob. My father, I declare that vision will not be buried. There's no Potiphar, there is no brother, there is no Jaira who is able to bring down my gift. I declare my father, my gift is for an appointed time and I'm holding on to Jesus and the appointed time. I'm holding on to faithfulness until the appointed time. I'm holding on to service until the appointed time. I'm holding on to hard work until the appointed time. I'm holding on to obedience until the appointed time. Thank you, Father, because my vision will not, will not die. My Father, you have said, even though it tarries, it will come to pass. My Father, we thank you because by your spirit, our visions will come to pass. Even the vision we have as a church, my father, it will come to pass. It will come to pass. Even visions we have as families, they will come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. No prison, no jailer, no oppression, no slavery that can stop our vision. No corona that can stop our vision. No pandemic. My father will go through into our vision. Into our vision, my father, we are coming. Into our vision 
vision, my Father, we are coming. Thank you for the vision. Thank you for the provision. Thank you for the battle. Thank you for the baker that you will set in such a place, in such an appointed time, who will remember me, my Father, from the palace. I thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Like Joseph, you will cause people to remember me in the palace. You said a gift well used will take me before great men. I thank you, Father, for the gift. The gift will be remembered in the high places. Thank you, my Father. I refuse to kill my gift. I refuse to sell my gift. My Father, my God, I will bring this gift to the end, to, to its fruition in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name, you can give Jesus a hand clap. He is such a wonderful God. He is such a good God. Just appreciate the Spirit of God for the word of today. Thank you for the word. Thank you for feeding me. Thank you for the daily bread. Thank you for the daily bread. Thank you for giving me daily bread. I receive that word today as my bread. Thank you for that is the bread that carries my healing. That is the bread that carries my blessing. That is the bread that carries my prosperity. That is the bread that will make way for me even during hard times. That is the bread of heaven. That is the bread of heaven. Thank you, Jesus, for the bread of heaven. Thank you, Lord. Spirit of God, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We can appreciate the Lord one more time. He is such a good God, such a faithful God. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we, we are just about to come to the end of the service. But we, there's a, something very important we have to do. We have to give in this presence of God. We have to give for the work of God in Jesus' name. We have to worship him with our substance. With our substance we have to. We have to give. We have to give in the presence of God in Jesus' name. And I'm calling all of us uh, to get into our pockets or into our phones. And uh, we will be able to, to give as the Lord is directing us to serve in his kingdom through our gifts. That is a direction that we are given by Paul that we need to receive that grace, that the grace that the church of Macedonia had, that they were able to support the work of God in Jerusalem. They were able to support the work of God. When you give at Shekinah Glorious Revelation Center, you are blessing the work of God. You are sacrificing. You are not losing your money. You are sacrificing in the kingdom and supporting this work, the Lord will release a blessing in return in the mighty name of Jesus. That's our pay bill is right there, 906-775, 906-775. That's our pay bill number. You can just go there and you can give your gift for the work that the Lord has given us and for the vision that he has given us in this particular church to his glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Are we doing that? Are we doing that? Amen, amen. Thank you, thank you. May the Lord bless 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 you. I know there are some people who are doing that also online. And whenever you hear this message, whenever you find this message, even if it is later, please don't forget to place your offering on that pay bill in Jesus' name. You know that is the wonder of online. Online. Online is a wonderful platform. 20 years down the line, somebody will still read that message. 20 years down the line. And it will still be flesh. It will still be alive in Jesus' name. Amen. Even if nobody is watching now, don't worry. God is able to direct people. Even if 10 years later, he will speak to a Joseph somewhere. Two, two days later, one day later. That, that's, the, that's, the, that's the awesomeness of online ministry. That it can go beyond your expectations. In Jesus' name. Yesterday, I was like, TBN. Amani, yeah, Sun Life. I was like, 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 this thing called, called technology is awesome. It's awesome. And yesterday in the evening, I was in Virginia in 1983, seated there, listening to Jimmy Swaggart. You know, this, this online thing is a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful platform. Amen? So when you get an opportunity, uh, please also listen to this message again and again and again. And you'll be blessed in Jesus' name. And also direct people to our... Eh, Mi ni medirect wa tukadha pale naona wa tukadha ni medirect kwa hiyo platform yetu ya Shekina Glory Celebration Center. You direct them there. Mambio kwa mba hapo ndiyo, utapata nourishment in Jesus name. Amen. Are we together? Are we good? Are we blessed? You can bless the Lord one more time with a hand clap. I will request our dad to come and give us a blessing. Uh, he is saying that uh, I'm equal to the task. Amen. I want to declare you are blessed as you go home. As you go home, you are going like a Joseph, 
you are going with that Joseph anointing today. As you go home, you are going to be a person of identity and vision. You're going to be a person who is able to release your gifts. You'll be able to be a person who is able to support others wholeheartedly in unity, in obedience, yes, and in hard work to the glory of God. And may the Lord give you all the wisdom that you need as you get to your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen and amen. Mbarikiwe sana, sana, sana. Siku ya ijuma, tunakutana tena. Sa kumina moja tuko hapa. That is on Friday. We are here again for another service in Jesus' name. And then you remember we said Saturday we will welcome a guest. Poza nyinto wauliza.